Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a couple of items from Good Made Better. This here is the Walnut uh, Pen Well uh, and I've also got the Traveller here to look at. But what I thought I'd do is I firstly quickly run down the concept for you. So the basic idea is that this is a micro suction little pad on the bottom. It sticks to your table and you put your pen in it a fountain pen you know in there like that and then you're able to remove that pen and uh, it lives on your desk sitting there ready for you great concept and uh, I think really really well executed um, it has a foam ring in here like a lining inside this which is conical so it gets narrower as it goes down towards the end um, and this can come out uh, and be replaced with this guy, which is a larger, it's got a larger bore uh, on it. I'll just take it out of the plastic here for us. So it's wider to be able to, uh, you know, sort of hold uh, bigger pens, but still conical so that you get that same um, nice sort of grip of the pen on the way down. So what I'm going to do today uh, is, oh, also like it's, you know, beautifully finished, um, nicely stained, all that sort of stuff. Like it's actually a really nice, nicely made and beautifully thought out product. So that is the Penwell. And the other one we have is the Traveller. Oh, firstly, the Penwell arrives packaged in a plain, simple cardboard box, which I think is great. Um, the label there saying Penwell, click pen convenience for the capped pen that you love. Good made better from South Dakota in the USA. They were good, made better. Were really gracious to send me these two products uh, to review and to show you guys. So thank you to them, uh, and uh, show your thanks by supporting them. They're a great company. They do the pen show circuit in the US when we can have pen shows, uh, and all of those sorts of things. So go out, check them out, support them, uh, and look at their products. Um, here we have the the Traveller version. Now this version um, is designed to go with you a bit more. Uh, it's got their logo on the front there. Nice little sort of zippered uh, pouch thing, and there it is. Um, so this is made of anodized aluminium with, once again, the foam inner there. Uh, and it's got these little screw uh, points on the side here, uh, which allow you to open it up to a range of angles. So that it sits on the desk, like it's a friend here. Um, and can be at a number of angles. So like I've even had it attached to a desk at that angle. Uh, I've also had it attached to a um, uh, a more sort of vertical surface uh, with it in, in this sort of, you know, sort of setup, which is really handy. It's got, a, it's a very flexible device um, and it comes with this clear plastic little um, sheet uh, to go on it to protect that micro suction uh, pad. You see how sticky that is. And as you can see, there's bits and pieces on this. These you can clean, a bit of warm water, um, even a piece of sort of sticky tape. Um, clean that off, get rid of the lint and everything. It is suggested to put onto a clean surface, but it is always gonna pick up bits and pieces. Um, okay, so we've got these two products. Let's have a quick look um, and see just sort of um, what they're about. Firstly, I think they're really well made. I'll go through some pros and cons at the end, but like these are really well made, really well thought out products. Um, and I think for the job they're doing, I think they do a really great job. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna put it to the test. I'm gonna, this is my, this is a like a, a laminate sort of style uh, bench top. It's got texture on it. I'm also, after this little um, demonstration, I'm going to uh, show it on a range of other surfaces. I've uh, done a little filming showing it yeah, on a range of uh, other surfaces just so we can get a sense of what it is about. So I'm just going to adjust the camera angle a little bit so we can get a sense of exactly what is going on here. Okay, so I've attached this to my desk. You can see here, like, I'm, I'm pulling this around. Oh knocking the camera over in the process. Um, and it's not going anywhere. It's really very sturdy. Um, and that's just a micro suction. You can hear that rattling everything around. It's sturdy, it's not going anywhere. And that is on a dirty pad. Like this has been moved from surface to surface 
all the surfaces I've shot it on were done before this video. And I've been trying it over the last sort of few days, well, few weeks on different surfaces. So I have a range of pens here. Just a few that I sort of prepared earlier for this very purpose. Because these are a range of capped, uh, like um, friction fit snap cap pens, as well as a couple of like, screw caps um, and in different sizes. So this is the standard bore inlay insert that I'm using here. Um, I will change it out uh, for the larger one at the end just to show a couple of other pens. But we're going to run both uh, pen wells uh, through their little paces and see just what actually fit uh, in this in this pen well. So I'll just push that down. This one has been moved around a lot. So as I said, there's a range of pens here and I want to try them in the two pen wells just to see how secure they actually are. Okay, um, let's start with the Pelican M805. Now you can see that fits very well in the standard pen well. Um, and you unscrew it. And that's basically how it works. And you can see that that pen fits. Now, M805 in the Traveller, absolutely. So because this is a square bore, you actually have actually a nice little nook for where the cap, uh, the clip can go into. I'll just actually turn that around so you can see it on a different angle. You can see that it tucks in nicely into the corner. Once again, twist and cap, beautiful. So in my opinion, I think that uh, screw cap pens are particularly well suited to this device. Um, Visconti Mirage now, which is a magnetic cap. You can see that works nicely. It's nice and secure. It's going in, it's staying in. And then into the Traveller, absolutely. Beautiful. Easy. Then uh, let's try well, a favourite of mine, the Twisby 580. Once again, screw cap fits very nicely in there. Goes in perfectly. And the same in the Traveller. Okay, I'm going to sort of just do a bit of a fast forward through a couple of these now. Okay, now I'm left with a few specific pens. I want to go from one end to the other now. Here we have the Kaweco Lilliput, which is a incredibly small pen. Now, this pen does not work in the Traveller. It is just too small. Um, but it's also not a pen that you would use uncapped. I'm just saying this for size. Whereas it does fit in the standard and you could use that if you wanted to in the pen well without any problem. Next, I have a Muji fountain pen, which is a, quite a slim fountain pen. Once again, it doesn't work in the Traveller, but it does work in the pen well. Nice and secure to cap and uncap. And that's not a, that has a bit of resistance on it. In fact, getting it out of there is actually going to be the fun part. Okay, two Lamy's now, Safari and the 2000. Safari in the Traveller fits very well and uncaps and caps extremely well. In the Penwell, we have the same, you know, performance. It's very good. And in fact, that clip having a little bit of extra sort of width on it through the, um, actually does provide a bit of extra traction. Then the Lamy 2000. Now, the Lamy 2000 fits very nicely and uncaps. This is a pen I use to actually uh, test things like the elastic straps on pen cases and things like that, because that is a, you know, it's a nice sort of snap cap. Um, and then in the pen well, once again, exactly the same. So you can see it's doing a wonderful job of actually taking 
you know most pens that we use or a lot of different sort of sorts of pen and uh, everything from screw caps to magnetic caps to snap caps uh, and actually shows that they perform very very well. Now we have the extreme end of pens. I've got two larger pens here, the Jinhao 159, which is modeled off the Mont Blanc 149, and then this Gamma pen, which I can never remember the model of, uh, which is just huge. If I hold this up to a Lamy Safari, you can see just how big uh, that pen is. It's long, it's girthy, it's a big pen. Do these pens fit in these pen wells? In the Traveller, these are both screw caps, so yes, it fits nicely in the Traveller. Does it fit in the pen well? It's a squeeze, but yes, it does. And there's a nice sort of bit of resistance on there that if it was a you had a snap cap pen this size, you probably would be quite fine as well. As for the, the large Gamma, once again, it fits nicely into the Traveller. Lots of turns on this pen nice and secure. And as you can see, the, both pen wells are really standing up in terms of grip on the tabletop here. That one fits nicely as well. So we've tried a range of pens, everything from the Kaveco Lilliput in size through to this rather large Gamma pen and everything seems to grip. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out this uh, insert and I'm gonna replace it with the large ball just to see uh, what those two large pens uh, look like in there. Uh, so I'm just gonna push that through, comes out the end there. And then we put the large bore insert in, and there we go, nice and easy. Um, it sits flush on the table again. And here we go. Oh, I'll put that in frame. <laughs> okay, and we have the Jinhao 159 again. Fits very, very comfortably here. Very comfortably. Um, very secure to use. Um, and then we have the Gamma again. And once again, a very, very secure fit. And when under it all, that unscrews, unscrews back in quite comfortably nice in that larger bore. There wouldn't be many pens you'd need this larger bore for, you know, like a Visconti Homo sapiens sort of doesn't get lost in there, but it's easily big enough. A standard pen, Lamy Safari, same thing, very secure, in there without too much of a problem. So that's the larger bore. Um, so as you can see, a lot of pens fit. Uh, let's now try it on a couple of other surfaces. Here is one use I have made, which is non-fountain pen use for the Traveller, which is here on my uh, keyboard next to, the, sometimes I have the iPad on here. So the Apple Pencil, like really sturdy on there. This is a plastic surface. Um, yeah, really great. And once again, it's just there, ready to go. Um, and yeah, another surface that that sticks to more than happily. So this is where it traditionally sits on my desk uh and you know with the you know normal sort of pen in there um the twisby 580 um you know sort of it sits comfortably and securely like it's moving the entire table i'm not sure how visible that is but like yeah it's not absolutely not going anywhere this is another desk in my office um, just testing different surfaces uh, where it will stick. And this is like been on surface after surface that's not been cleaned. Um, and you can see that took quite a lot of effort. Uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely not going anywhere off there. Um, and yeah, you can see like, just to, to remove it from there, like takes a lot of effort. It's not super clean and yet it is still sticking uh, like that to the surface. So here next to my pen cup, which is placed on the base of my desk lamp, um, I found this is a, another location that works really well for the pen well. Uh, it's, you know, like it's a very smooth surface. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking like a, 
like a sort of a, a stony sort of surface. Um, and yeah, the pedal st sticks on there very nicely. It's nice and secure. Uh, and you can see with the Lamy Safari, it uncaps. Like, perfect. Um, so another sort of, you know, a very smooth surface. Um, as opposed to the desk which it was on before, which is a, you know, a more coarse surface. Um, so it really doesn't have a problem sticking to anything. So let's talk pros and cons about these products. Let's start with the Traveller. Cons, well, look, it's a $45 US product. Uh, it's simple, it's elegant, it's got, it does its job. Smaller pens will not fit in here. Larger pens will not fit in here. In here. It is a little more limited although the you know the the jinhao and the gamma pen did fit you know i think it's more likely uh, to be a successful product for something like the size of a lamy safari that sort of standard size pen um at 45 dollars, it's a not too expensive you know price for a product that does a very specific job uh, that's well made from a small company and all of that so i think it's worth the money it can be you know adjusted, tightened, and all those sorts of things, and you can clean the little microsuction pad, I think it's a really great little product. And at $45, I think it's great. As for the pen wheel itself, at $55, I think this is an absolutely wonderful product. Um, it's a really lovely piece. There's a lot of different finishes you can get, and they do special editions, and the prices do really rock up in price, rock it up in price. Um, but it takes everything from a, a pen the size of a Lilliput through to, especially if you use this larger bore, there's not a lot of pens that wouldn't fit uh, in this pen well. Everything, I think, probably mm, the majority of sort of, you know, standard oversized fountain pens wouldn't have a problem in here. The micro suction pad does a great job. Multiple surfaces, multiple sorts of surfaces. Um, as I said, I've not cl cleaned these yet in the time I've had them, and they're still sticking to everything I put them on, um, but it's easy to clean them with, so they're products that are well thought out uh, and they're well, you know, sort of well priced and well designed and well made. So I really think these are a wonderful product and look great on your, on your desk uh, and, you know, sort of do really actually, you know, sort of serve a purpose that a lot of us didn't know we really would need. Desk pens have been around for decades, you know, like... Since the beginning of fountain pens, there have been desk pens, and before that, dip pens that sat in, you know, inkwells and things on your desk. This takes our, you know, beloved fountain pens that we use on a daily basis and turns them into that desk pen. And I think it's a really great product for that. Uh, the convenience of it is wonderful. Um, you know, I, I can't find too many cons with these products. Most pens fit. They, you know, they suction well. There's, you know, a range of them available, different colors, different finishes, different materials. So if this is the sort of product you might be interested in, I really think you should go and check um, them out. As I said, good made better, the Penwell and the Traveler. Really nice products made in the USA and available all over the world. So thank you for watching. It's been a slightly different video with some handheld stuff and a few sort of camera issues due to the different angle and stuff that I'm trying to film on to show these products off to their best. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, like, I think the products speak for themselves. So if these are things, yeah, as I said, if these are things you're interested in, go check them out. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, you know, hit the notifications button to stay up to date with all the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. Uh, please feel free to get in touch if the, there are products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I'd love to hear from you. And, uh, Big thank you once again to Good Made Better for providing these items for review. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your accessories, and I'll talk to you soon.